Item 5.2, uh, appointment of the Skinner Road School Principal. Um, I would like to introduce you to um, the, the finalist or a final candidate for the principalship of Skinner Road School. And um, her name is Sandy Simon. She comes to us from Lebanon Public Schools right now. But she started out as a special education teacher, then a grade six regular education teacher. Uh, became a coordinator of an alternative program in Manchester, so those were in Manchester. Then became an assistant principal at Coventry High School. Then an assistant principal for Lebanon Elementary and Middle School. That's two different schools where you go back and forth between the two. And then a principal at Lebanon Elementary School. Um, she became a special ed director. I don't think that was her real choice. She really loved being a principal, which is why she's uh, coming back uh, to being a principal. Um, she also served uh, for a very short time as an interim superintendent, uh, I think around 2010, when they were waiting for Dr. Tyler to, um, to come. She has a bachelor's degree in both special and elementary education um, from Boston University. She has a master's degree in curriculum and instruction, a sixth year in administration, and uh, she's also super, uh, certified to be a superintendent. Um, all of those degrees came from the University of Connecticut. So we are delighted to introduce her to you. She is here. Uh, Sandy, why don't you come on up to the table? And the board may have a couple of questions to ask you. Back to the hot seat. seat. The hot seat, right. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And those of you who have not met her, this is Ms. Sandy Simon. Nice to see everyone tonight. Board members, does anybody have any questions? I'd entertain a motion, Mr. Percy. I move that we move into executive session, inviting the superintendent and the second senate. I have a motion to enter into executive session. Uh, Ms. Bush. Second. I have a motion and a second to enter into executive session, inviting Dr. Conway and Ms. Simons. Is there a discussion on motion? Seeing none, I'll take a vote. All in favor, by show of hands. And that's unanimous. We're going to enter into executive session.
Mrs. Arnold. I move to approve the. I don't, no, I don't know that the camera is the camera on, Mr. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Most of the I move to approve the appointment of Sandy Simon as elementary principal at Skinner Road School. I have a motion, Mr. Percy. I'd like a second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'm going to call for a vote by a show of hands. All in favor? And that motion is unanimous. Welcome. Well, Welcome to the nice public schools. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Educational Development Center. Thank you. I'm going to turn this over immediately to Mr. Osmond and Ms. Cass. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Um, so let me put on my other hat here for a second. But um, so in the board packet, you'll see that um, this is a request to participate um, in this. Uh, if you would, research study grant. Uh, it's part of a National Science Foundation grant that um, is uh, in partnership with EDC in Boston, which is the Education Development Center, and um, Education Connection out of Litchfield. That's one of the, the Connecticut rests. Um, and so what they're trying to do is actually they've created a science curriculum for high school um, that looks at uh, 20th century skills. Uh, it, it's got a lot of great things with it. It's also uh, incorporating, uh, integrating common core skills. Um, and they're actually looking for 40 schools across the state to participate in this. Um, so in that, you'll see what happens if we're assigned to the treatment group and also in the comparison group. I'm really hoping that we're assigned to the treatment group. Um, last week, uh, I met with uh, science staff at Rockville High School and we discussed it. They've all had the opportunity to um, look at the curriculum. The curriculum that they actually have developed is online and uh, is accessible through Moodle. Um, so they have a whole uh, curriculum that, again, is online. It's not that you have to use it online, but all the resources and everything that you have are available online. You, you don't have to have the kids online to do it or whatever. But uh, and there's a whole community of districts that are actually currently using it They've actually done a smaller study, and so now they're looking to go to a larger scale um, study to do this. Um, there's a lot of great advantages to this, regardless or irregardless of which uh, group we're chosen to be in, whether it's the um, treatment group or whether it's the comparison group. If it's the treatment group, we're really going to start to see the benefits right away. If it's the um, comparison group, um, afterwards we're going to get to see the benefits of this curriculum. Um, one of the th things that I've talked about with them is also as we move to the next generation science standards, um, this curriculum currently is really written to the current Connecticut standards, but they're looking already to adjust that and integrate that in so that it's a kind of a moving forward document. Um, so within that, um, uh, we'll be receiving professional development and again the curriculum. Curriculum. So again, if we're part of the treatment group right away, starting actually this summer, if we're one of the comparison groups um, at the end of, I believe, sorry, where is it? I don't have it right in front of So I, I, it's advantageous either way. And we really know we're, we're in, currently in the science curriculum development cycle, um, but are again waiting for the uh, final draft of the next generation science standards and also then to see what the state's going to do with it. But this, being part of this is really trying to be ahead of the curve on that. Um, when it says research study involving students, again, it won't, it's still anonymous. The only thing that they're really going to be looking at is surveys of the students and then also at capped data. So the capped data that they'll be looking at really is um, similar to some of the other grants and studies we've done before where they're just able to get the scores and whatnot, not student names. And that's uh, it. That's all I know. So, does anybody have any questions for Ms. Fisher? Um, if I understand it correctly, it's a two-year study. 
correct? Yeah, really, uh, it's really a three year, um, but it's interesting because we're going to be looking at cap data. And um, so, say for example, this first year of the pro of a project will be training um, teachers of ninth grade students. So really looking at the earth and energy essentials. And then, so we are looking at that, then when that group of students who would be freshmen next year move in as sophomores, then we would train um, biology teachers. So then at the end of that 10th grade, they take CAT. It also has a 21st century chemistry aspect curriculum too, which is then in the third year. So I don't know how they're going to go about measuring um, that. So if we're in the comparison group, um, the only benefit, well, not only it would be a great benefit, but it, we wouldn't be able to take advantage of this curriculum until the third year, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. Other question, Ms. Summer? The EDC, hi Chris, the EDC offers um, $2,000 support for each cohort that's run. Is, yeah, there's... Is there an actual expense that that covers or doesn't cover? Um, I'm not really sure how that's all going to play out yet. We're still working on that. They're still waiting for final approval from the, from NSF, and so I've got to go through the whole big thing to see that. So but yeah, there is money and stipends in there for, there's money for materials and things that we might need, and then there's also stipends for, say, uh, you know, whether it's the site coordinator or whether it's for, you know, training, uh, professional development over the summer, whatever, they have stipends for teachers above and beyond what, what the normal work would be. I, my, my question is more, if is there exposure to the board for some financial responsibility if we approve this motion or approve your request above um, and beyond the stipends and the... I really don't think, in my going through all the things there, my discussions with them, there really isn't. Uh, I think we need to make sure that um, we have the technology, which I believe we do, to access the curriculum. And uh, I think we have what we need in place to be able to do that. 